This is Matador News, and these are today's headlines. Democratic candidates debate tonight in Las Vegas. Dutch investigators confirm Russian missile shot down a Malaysian passenger jet over the Ukraine last year. And it's do or die for Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers <coughs> in postseason play tonight. Hello and welcome to Matador News. My name is Sarah Curl. And I'm Sophia Levin. Attacks in Jerusalem killed three Israelis and leave a dozen wounded. The attacks were carried out by Palestinians who boarded a bus and started to shoot passengers. Another man rammed a car into pedestrians and then stabbed them. Two of the attackers were killed by police. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called for an emergency meeting with security officials. The outbreak of violence also includes the killing of nine Palestinians by Israeli gunfire in Gaza over the weekend. The Dutch Safety Board has released its report on last year's Malaysian airplane crash over the Ukraine. Chief Investigator Duke Jostra says the Buke missile that hit the airplane was fired by the Russians. This warhead was of the 9N314M type carried on the kind of missile that is installed on the back service to air missile system. On July, on July 2014, the Boeing 77 was flying from Amsterdam to Malaysia when it was shut down. The investigation found that a warhead hit the left-hand side of the cockpit first and caused damage there. 298 people were killed. It took more than, than a year for the Dutch investigation to be complete. The Dutch Safety Board brought plane parts of the Donetsk region to reconstruct the Boeing 77. The investigation doesn't say who exactly fired the surface to air pocket. Further findings are going to be published in 2016. An airstrike in Iraq killed nine ISIS officials. The Iraqi Air Force struck a convoy believed to carry the terrorist leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. A large number of Baghdadi's bodyguards were also killed. The fate of the leader is unknown, but U.S. military officials believe the leader is still alive. Claims that, ba that Baghdadi has been hit in airstrikes have been made twice this past year. Baghdadi is known as the number one enemy in the fight against ISIS. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will face, uh, will face off tonight in the first Democratic debate of the 2016 campaign. Rumor is that Vice President Joe Biden may be a late entry into tonight's debate. CNN producers are saying they are ready to add a podium in case Biden doesn't decide to join the debate. The debate, which will take place in Las Vegas, is, ex is expected to have the largest audience for the Democratic candidates since the primary race began. Clinton and Sanders will go up against three other candidates who are currently at the bottoms of the polls. The other candidates on tonight's debate are former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, former Virginia Senator Jim Webb, and Lincoln Chaffee, rep Republican turned independent, turned Democrat from Rhode Island. Matador News reporter Arabea Hernandez is in the newsroom with more on the story. The debate will allow Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders to address key problems in the campaign. They barely have mentioned each other in their campaign speeches, but Sanders approached the topic of Clinton's votes on the Iraq war and her stance on Wall Street. Clinton has been critical about Sanders' plan on gun control. CSUN political science professor Kirsty Michaud said this is a good opportunity for students to learn about <clears throat> the candidates. So I think students should probably be looking for messages that resonate with them because I think that that's what both Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton and the other candidates as well are going to be trying to do. They're, they're trying to mobilize people who have interests similar to what students are interested in. CSUN students also have their opinions on the candidates they favor the most. Why or why not? Yes, I will be watching the debate tonight and I am rooting for Clinton. I think women have the power to really make a big change. Um, I am looking to watch Bernie Sanders. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, I think he really has the best platform. I think he's been really consistent over the past 30 years. For those, for those of you who are interested in watching, the debate will be airing today at 5.30 on CNN. 
The Kansas City Fire Department mourns the death of two their firefighters involved in an overnight fire. Larry Leggio and John Mesh were part of, of a four-man team involved in rescuing two residents from a two-alarm apartment fire. Moments after the rescue, a side of the building collapsed, trapping the four firefighters. Leggio and Mesh died in the scene. The two others were transported to hospital and are expected to recover. Fire Chief Paul Baradi says his thoughts and prayers are with the families involved. The cause of the fire doesn't seem suspicious, but is still under investigation. Los Angeles County detectives are investigating the discovery of a human skull in the Angeles National Forest. The remains were found in the area of Glendora near mile marker 10.5. Hunters reported the find to the Sheriff's Department. Anyone with additional information is urged to contact the LA County Sheriff's Department's Homicide Bureau. For California, schools are changing mascots after Governor Brown signed a legislation barring public schools from using the Redskins name for sports team. The measures goes into effect January 1, 2017. The measure will affect Justin High School, Calaveras High School, Tochilla Union High School and Tulara High School. The bill was defeated four times in the state dating back to 2002 before it passed the assembly and eventually was signed into law Sunday. Now here is Nicholas Seaman with the latest on sports. Thanks Sophia. <clears throat> USC's football coach Steve Sarkeesian has been fired after showcasing multiple accounts of erratic behavior. USC's athletic director Pat Hayden fired Sarkeesian after he failed to show up to a recent practice. Concerns about the former coach began I called Steve, talked to him. Uh, it was cl very clear to me that uh, he is not healthy. Uh, I asked him to take an indefinite leave of absence. Concerns about the former coach began when he appeared intoxicated at a football booster event in August. During the pep rally, witnesses said Sarkeesian slurred his words and insulted opponents. It is still unclear if USC will have to pay the remainder of Sarkeesian's contract. Clay Helton will step in as USC's interim coach until they find someone to fill Sarkeesian's role. Let's head over to the Stundal studio with Matador News reporter Carla Gutierrez with more information about Cal State Northridge's Matador Madness. <clears throat> Thanks, Nick. Today we have with us Associate Athletics Director for Marketing, Branding, and Fan Development, Don Ellerby Crawford. She is here to talk to us about Matador Madness. Don, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So Don, for those who don't know, what is Matador Madness? Matador Madness is our first look at the men's and women's basketball program for the 2015-16 season. A little history on Matador, Matador Madness, <laughs> across the country, the month of October starts basketball season for so many schools, and usually they do an event at midnight. We've taken us back a little bit to make it more fan-friendly and good for our students to come out, so we're going to start ours at about 7, and it's an introduction, like I said, to the men's and women's basketball programs and a chance for our students who have not been to the Matadome to come out and enjoy a great game day experience. And why is Matador Madness significant to CSUN Athletics? Um, it's our signature event for the fall, and it just gives us a chance to connect with our students, connect with our faculty and staff, and connect with the community to bring them all to the event. It's free, it's open to the public. Like I said, they get to meet the men's and women's basketball programs. We'll have other student athletes there for a meet and greet. There's free food, there's games, there's prizes. We have music on the patio by DJ Mouski. It's just a fun event for all. Well, great, Don. Thank you so much for being with here today, uh, with us today. So, as Don has mentioned, this is a free event. It is open to the public, and it will be held this Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. It will be held on the blacktop at the Matadome. Um, for more information, feel free to check out GoMatadors.com. That's it for us here at the Sundial Newsroom. Back to the studio with Nick. The Dodgers will start Clayton Kershaw tonight in hopes of forcing a Game 5 in the National League Division Series against the New York Mets. The Mets used their closer to enforce their 13-7 win last night over the Dodgers. L.A. was first to the scoreboard and put up three consecutive singles in the second inning. The lead didn't last long as the Mets answered with four runs in the top of the third. New York put up ten unanswered points until L.A.'s Adrian Gonzalez hit a home run in the bottom of the seventh. The Dodgers carved out three more runs to make it to a six-point game, but couldn't capitalize on the night. 
The Mets will host the game and Dodgers host the Dodgers in game four tonight at City Field. Now let's go to Glory Mendez with business news. Thank you, Nick. Beer merger. The two biggest beer producers are preparing to merge after Sab Miller accepted Ann Hoy's Bush in Bev's takeover. The $106 billion deal will allow the firm to own almost the third, one third of the world's market. AB and Bev's brands include Budweiser, Stella Artois, and Corona, while Sab Miller brews Peroni and Golsh. Sab Miller rejected four previous offers before the two firms reached an agreement. The offer would employ 225,000 and receive more than $73 billion in global revenue. Other U.S. and Chinese beer producers are arguing that this stifles the competition and decreases choices for consumers. The two firms are expected to formally finalize a deal on October 28th. Twitter will lay off 8% of its employees. The cut mainly will be in the pro product and engineering teams. Up to 336 employees globally will lose their jobs. The company's CEO, Jack Dorsey, tweeted a link to the letter he sent to employees. In the letter, Dorsey said they feel strongly that engineering will move much faster with a smaller team. The company has doubled its global workforce in the past two years, but Twitter's user base has grown less than 50 percent. Investors seem to like the change because Twitter shares have gone up 3 percent since news broke. Now let's go to Nick with the latest in health news. A recent study shows cancer survivors may be at risk due to their poor diets. Tufts University researchers say survivors eat emptier calories and less fiber than the general population. Better nutrition could help protect cancer survivors from chronic illnesses and improve their long-term health and survival. Researchers say some therapies could be the reason for the survivors' poor diets by causing food cravings and changes in taste preference. The changes survivors feel at the end of their treatment may make it difficult to follow a healthy diet. <coughs> Diets rich in fiber from whole grains and vegetables are important targets for cancer survivors. A new type of heart stent dissolves after it heals arteries, instead of unnecessarily staying implanted in a patient. The stent keeps blood vessels from reclogging after an artery opening procedure. Absorb works as any other conventional stent, but researchers say the disappearing aspect makes it more beneficial for patients because it leaves no metal behind. The current implants used in the U.S. are permanent and have been known to cause inflammation and other problems. The latest study from Absorb involved 2,000 patients with chest pains. More than 90% of the patients reported positive results. The next step for the study is observing the patients after the stent dissolves. The U.S. has more than 850,000 heart disease patients a year. Price could be a factor of how well the stent catches on in the U.S. Now let's go back to Glory with ent entertainment news. Aerosmith's lead singer, Steven Tyler, seems to have some issues with Donald Trump. Trump has been using Tyler's song, Dream On, without his consent. Trump plays the song at his presidential campaign and rallies. Tyler asked the presidential candidate to stop using the song in a cease and desist letter on Saturday. Tyler's attorney says Tyler is not endorsing Trump's campaign. On Monday, at No Labels conference in New Hampshire, Donald Trump said it had all been worked out. That was minutes before he walked out to the song. Play, Playboy's editor-in-chief, Hugh Hefner, says the magazine will no longer have photographs of nude models. The shift will start in March. Playboy CEO Scott Flanders says any nude photographs can now be accessed for free on the Internet. A change in time has brought them to make changes in their magazine. The magazine sales have also declined since the 70s. Playboy currently has a circulation of 800,000 compared to the millions sold in, seven, in the 70s. Although Playboy will no longer feature nudity, the magazine will continue to publish sexy and seductive photographs and remain with their long-form journalism interviews. That's all for entertainment. Back to Sophia with weather. Thank you. The weather continues to be hot in Northridge. Today's high is expected to be 90 degrees. CSUN students are trying to find ways to keep their cool and stay out of the heat by staying inside and finding pieces of shade. But the National Weather Institute is forecasting a cool down and a chance of thunderstorms and rain starting Friday and continuing to Sunday evening. They are also forecasting the temperatures for the rest of the week to cool down to the mid 80s starting on Thursday. Thanks. Th thank you for watching Madden News. I'm Sarah Curl. And I'm Sophia Levin. I'm Nicholas Seaman. And I'm Glory Mendez. We hope you have a good day.